well, look, we know the state of the BBC. It's a state of decline, really. We've seen trust uh, over the BBC's conduct when it comes to issues like Brexit. We've seen trust fall. We now know that the BBC licence fee is the least popular tax in the country. The number of licence fees is actually uh, plummeting. And we're now seeing a number of former BBC uh, presenters and journalists uh, leaving the BBC and telling us what they really think after you know this whole charade of pretending to be uh, impartial on telly. Uh, and basically, it confirms what Leavers and Brexiteers have been saying for a while. Now, Emily Maitlis uh, making quite a balmy uh, speech, I must say. You may remember her from that Newsnight rant that sparked uh, tens of thousands of complaints. Uh, and people like Dr Chris Newton on the back of this latest uh, Emily Maitlis intervention post BBC saying everything that he's read from her since she left the BBC so far just confirms his belief that she was totally unsuitable to work for an impartial public service broadcaster and that none of her views surprise me. They certainly don't surprise me either. Just to give you a, a flavour of how balmy this speech was, uh, Anna Soubry <laughs> described uh, the fight back beginning, of course, uh, former MP. You know, a number of people, Christian Calgary, one of those there, calling out just how balmy uh, this speech is. Uh, Andy Mayer, another one, flagging up some of the, uh, let's say, strange comments in the speech. But of course, uh, pro EU hardline Remainers are uh, really in favour, a big fan of this speech. And, you know, you had everything in it from uh, accusations of an active Tory agent an active uh, agent of the Conservative Party being involved on the BBC board. Funny, uh, Harry Cole notes, there were no posh telecrowd speeches decrying the fact that the entire BBC strategy was for many years set by a Gordon Brown era Labour cabinet minister who sat on this hallowed BBC board. The word conspiracy uh, even comes up uh, in this Emily Maitlis speech. Here is a uh, short little taster of what she had to say. Their insistence on third nation status has meant passport checks and horrendous waiting times. Labour avoids talking about Brexit because it's decided, rightly or wrongly, to distance itself from Remainer tags. And large sections of both the BBC and government supporting newspapers appear to go into an automatic crouch position whenever the Brexit issue looms large. Many broadcasters fear discussing the obvious economic cause of major change in this country in case they get labelled pessimistic, anti-populist, or worse still, see above, unpatriotic. And yet every day that we sidestep these issues with glaring omissions feels like a conspiracy against the British people. So yeah, look, in this um, bonkers view that apparently the, the BBC is somehow upbeat, patriotic, and was fair in its Brexit coverage. I mean, that is, you know, an interesting point of view, let's say. <laughs> Not one I dare say much of the British public uh, shares. Let me know what you make of all of this in the comments below, guys. But as I say, it's interesting to note, I think, that what many Brexiteers perceive are the true views of those uh, who worked at the BBC, who are now, uh, some of whom are now leaving. Well, pretty much spot on, isn't it?